Hi, and thank you for watching this video. My name is Darren O'Shea. I am the owner of PowerBricks.com. Today we want to take a moment to show you the procedure for removing and replacing a keycap on a laptop computer keyboard. Now there are many different types of keyboards and keyboard mechanisms out there and I'll be able to show you how to deal with a couple of them. For the example I have here, I have actually used a Dell keyboard from a Dell Inspiron 6000. This is actually an H5639 keyboard. Now, I'm actually holding two keyboards that look identical, and they actually are identical in function. However, they're manufactured by two different locations. One is actually made in China. The other one is made in Thailand. And you may notice, even taking a look at the back, that the backs of these keyboards uh, appear completely different. And that kind of tells you a little bit of the truth about the fact that the mechanisms behind the keycaps are different too. Therefore, if you were to go to a seller on eBay, for example, and just try to purchase a keycap from them, you would not be able to do that reliably unless you knew exactly the keyboard that you had and the exact type of keycap that they were selling you. Okay. Okay, we're going to zoom in on this so you can see a little close up of what I'll be doing. Now, I've removed the sample key from each of these two keyboards. Um, this one has a flat plate on top above a rubber spring and has a, a couple of parts. There's a white part of a scissor mechanism, scissor mechanism and a black part of the scissor mechanism. And then down at the bottom there is one other black U-shaped piece of plastic that's fitting snugly in some clips there. If we take a look at the other keyboard, it's a little different. It also has a, a black rubber sponge in the center of it. It has a scissor mechanism that rises up and down. It's just two white pieces of plastic or nylon. And they also um, snap into some clips in the bottom of the keyboard. So, let's just start with this one. I'm going to just remove a sample key. Let's try this L right here. Now typically, I've got the keyboard upside down in your view. It makes it easiest to work on for me, but I'm going to try to remove it from the bottom, and the easiest way I can do that is basically just lift up on a corner until I feel something snap. There we go. I'll remove that key, and you can see the key mechanism underneath of it. Now, if we were to look at the back of the key, you will see that there are two slots on one side of it and two clips on the other side. And that's important to notice because when we reorient it back onto the keyboard, the two slots will be fitting onto two posts that are sticking out from the mechanism. And the two clips will be clipping onto two parts of the mechanism. So you'll see that shortly. So this particular mechanism is really easy to remove. Now I always use my pocket knife. I get in there and and I find a little part of the mechanism that's just stuck in right right underneath the, the tab there. I just pry that out. This is being a little ornery for me. There we go. And then I can just take that mechanism right out. It's about all there is to it. The mechanism is made of two pieces that one sits inside of the other. There are two itty bitty tiny posts that line up with holes on the inside of the larger mechanism. And you'll see what I do when I have it oriented properly. I just squeeze on the bigger mechanism and the small posts slide into position and it lays flat. Looks like one piece. To reinstall this, I ensure that all my clips are not bent down, so you'll want to take a look at the clips on either side. There may be you know, three or four clips on the bottom of the keyboard that you'll need to examine. Just make sure that they haven't been bitten down. Sometimes you can just take your needle nose pliers and bend those back straight up into position again and, and get a uh, previously unusable keyboard going. Anyway, we're going to take this mechanism again going to line the top of it back back in place underneath of its big clip and then the two little 
fingers that are sticking out there. I'm just going to push back into place. That's all there is. That guy's back, back on there. I'm going to take the key. The two slots I'm going to locate right above the two tabs. Kind of press that down into there until it's about into the right place. And on the bottom side I'll just push down until I hear a couple of clicks. And that guy's installed. Now we're going to swap this out for the other style keyboard. Let's do the same thing here. Let's go for that same key. So we'll try to take the L off. Okay, that came off pretty easily. That's probably why you're watching this video, because yours came off a little too easily too. This one's a little trickier for me. Um, I'm going to push down on this and just um, stick my knife right between the black and the white parts of that. And I can actually take the black paddle out. So the flat part of that just comes out. Okay, and then that leaves us with a white part and a black part of the scissor mechanism here. Now for this one I figured out that I can just stick my knife edge in right here at the edge and just pry a little bit and until everybody comes free. And then I slid the whole thing up toward the top of the keyboard and it just came out. So this guy is, there's a white part and a black part that come apart from each other. There we go. And we have two halves of it. So I can put those back together. Put them into place. I'll set them off to the side for a second here. And just to show you this final part under here, it's just a little U-shaped piece of plastic that fits inside the four tabs. Again, if yours were bent down a little bit or something, you could possibly pry them back up into shape with uh, maybe a knife edge and a needle nose plier being careful that you don't actually cut or damage the plastic surface below because that's what actually has all your circuitry. I put this back in place there you go Let's see. seems to be back in there Okay, we'll take our scissor mechanism. In this case, the black part has a couple of notches sticking out at the top. They actually fit underneath the two ends of the black U-shaped part. Once they slide down in position, then I can just depress the white tabs into the white notches into place until I hear a snap, and I heard that snap. So now my mechanism is in there and is in place. And then I'm going to take the flat part, insert it on the bottom edge, and I think I'll just use my knife edge again to uh, put in between those guys, lever it into place a little bit, and there, it's actually right back into place. So this key cap actually just has two notches on the top and bottom, two clips that are just going to grab in these little tiny holes here. So it'll become locked onto the flat plate. So I'll basically just turn it back over, make sure it's oriented properly. Kind of set it on there lightly until it feels like it's in about the right place. Push down, and it's as good as new. Well, that's all there was to that. You can check out our other videos for some examples of some some of the more complex keys, such as the space bar, the shift and enter keys, they've got a couple extra parts in there. It's all pretty uh, easy to deal with, though, once you know what you're looking at. We, we will suggest that if you get your parts mixed up, can't quite figure out how something fits together, pop another key off and examine that one and see how everything looks and how it fits together. And then you can get the other one put back together also. If when you're taking a key off, the plastic mechanism comes off of the clips and actually stays on the back of the key, then you can just use your knife edge to pop it free of the back of the key cap. Okay, well thank you very much for viewing this video.